Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So a little bit of a different video today. Normally we're in here in the workshop machining away great. But today I thought I'd share with you a little bit of knowledge I've learnt recently on Fusion 360 because just recently I found Fusion 360 and the new 3D printer to be a real good asset to the workshop. So as you can see here I've been 3D printing some tool holders for starting to get through all of my milling tools and today I want to get another one of those tools done. So I want to get another holder made for the fly cutter. And as the shape of this fly cutter is really basic I thought it would be a good chance to show you guys how I go through designing this on Fusion 360 and showing you the final product once it's been 3D printed. So, a little bit of a different video today guys. Hope you like it. Please give it a thumbs up if you do and leave a comment below if you want to see more videos like this. But for now, let's head over to the PC. So jumping on to Fusion 360 now, and this is where we're going to be doing our CAD model for our fly cutter. So the first thing I want to do now is I want to save this file. So Control S is going to bring up the save function, and I'm just going to name this fly cutter. And I've got a file system going here, and I want to save this fly cutter body into a new folder. So first thing we're going to do, create a folder called fly cutter. And we're just going to save that in there, save that as body. So with that saved, we can start our sketch. So I'm going to turn on the origins, and I'm going to be doing a sketch on the XY plane, which is here. So let's start a sketch. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be sketching out the circular part of the body, sort of the main head part. So using a set of calipers, I can just get a rough idea of how big this is at its widest point. So we're looking, I'm going to go with 52mm on that. So I need to draw a circle 52mm in diameter. So click the circle function, go into the centre, drag this out and we're going with 52 Click enter. So once we've got our circle there, next thing we need to do now is extrude that. So I'm going to extrude that up and this is again where we're using our calipers to measure the body here. Forty millimeters. So we're going to extrude that up forty millimeters. Lovely. So we've now got sort of the cutting head of the body. Next thing we need to do now is the MT3 tapered shank that goes on the back of here. So we're going to be clipping on this top face here and doing another sketch. And before we get our circle up this time, let's roughly work out how big this shank is. So, 24.1 millimetres. So sketch, centre origin again, and 24.1 millimetres. And we'll finish the sketch there. So we're not going to extrude that yet because we need to know how far up to extrude that and also sort of the smaller diameter on the shank there. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to offset the plane. So we're going to click on the X and Y plane again and we need to know how far up to offset that. So that's where you want to measure your tool. So we've already done 40mm for the body. We need to work out how long this shank is going to be. And it turns out it's going to be going 90 mil. So 90 millimeters plus the original 40 gives us an offset of 130. And up there we have our offset plane. So we're going to be doing another sketch now, but this time on this offset plane. And this is where we're going to measure the smallest part of the shank. So the bit right at the top.
and that is coming in at 20.2 millimeters. So we're going to do a circle again, center line 20.2, done. And we'll finish the sketch there. And now we've got a really simple thing we can do using Fusion 360. By just using the loft function, we can select on our top circle here, which is the smallest part of the shank, and we can select down here at the largest part of the shank, and straight away it will automatically connect the two up for us, and click OK there. So now we have what seems to be a fly cutter body. We don't need all the fancy geometry angles in here or cuts because we're going to be only using this as a tool holder so we're not too worried about that. So I'm just going to command S and just save that again. And now once I'm happy with that, which I all am, I'm now going to open up a new folder. And I've already made it. We've got a blank tool block here. So I'm going to click on that going to open that up. So this blank tool block is what I've been using to sort of as a base model for putting the bodies in. So right with that open now I'm going to drag the fly cutter body back in here and with these two ready I can start to model this. So I'm going to move that out of the way, click OK and just because I don't want to edit this and affect my other drawing, I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to break the link here. So now anything I do to this is going to be independent to the drawing that we've done previously. So the first thing really we need to do now is we need to join these two up. So using the join function, which is short key for J, I'm just going to quickly select both these bodies here where I want them to join. So we're going centre line middle there and roughly the centre line middle there and that will automatically join the two. At the minute though, that's not a really good position for me. It's quite recessed in there, and I want that up a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag this up. What should we go? Uh, that looks pretty good actually. So what's that, 20 mil? And do I need to bring it forward at all? Um, we'll come forward like a mil just so it breaks through there. One mil and click enter there. So now we've got these two joined up here I need to cut this part out of the tool holder so to do that we've got the combine function up here and this is really simple now really good that Fusion 360 offers this so all we're going to do is we're going to select the tool holder body itself and we're going to then select the fly cutter body and put these from join to cut and we're not too bothered so we'll get rid of the tools and click OK and just like that we've got a tool holder with the cutout for our fly cutter to go into so this is almost ready now to be sent over to the 3D printer the only other little few things I want to add to this is just to get this a nice fit I'm going to click this here, click extrude and we're just going to extrude that all the way out so we've not got that in there. Get rid of that. And also because we're doing this on a 3D printer, the chances are this print here isn't going to be exactly what we've measured. Because 3D printers have this tendency to add material where you don't really want it. So I'm going to go up to the modify section here. And we're going to click offset face. And with offset face selected I'm going to select all the mating surfaces. We've got that one there and then that one there and we're going to offset that by negative 0.5 millimeters so that just gives us a little bit of leeway when we go to put the holder in enter so only thing left to do now is really to tart this up we're just going to add a slight fillet all the way around the edge so did I, did I say fillet I meant chamfer sorry we're going to add a nice chamfer all the way around the edge so just going to select all these faces here. Yeah, that one as well. That one. That one. That one. 
that one and then that one and we're going to do a three millimeter chamfer what does that look like oh my god no we'll go two go for a two millimeter chamfer that looks pretty good and just finally this part here I do want to add a fillet to there and we'll do two mil uh, we'll go three mil go for a three mil fillet make that a nice fit and enter so that right there is pretty much our tool holder all done I'm just going to save that as before the computer dies which it's not got it's got, it's got good battery but just in case so we're going to do it in the fly cutter folder again and we're going to go fly cutter tool holder this time oh, not even typing fly cutter tool holder so that's done so all that's left to really do now is export this as an STL file drag it over to my 3D printer software and get printing because I imagine a block this sort of size it's going to take a little bit of time so I'm going to have to leave this running for most of the day so going to come back in a few hours time guys when this is all finished and then we can look at the final product and just add this to our new collection There we have it then guys, the fly cutter tool holder is all finished and it's actually come out really nice. So that was about an 8 hour print and the quality on that is really good. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today, it's given you guys a little insight into just how easy and accessible Fusion 360 is for the hobbyist. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment below just saying if you want to see any more videos like this. But for now, that's all the Fusion 360 done. Next week, we'll be back in the workshop doing some machining. Have a good week, guys. Happy machining.